now we get to mean Gene. <laughs> okay, so they had the Bret Hart insert where Bret is asked who you would like to wrestle tonight. Mm-hmm. And in, he's just as nice as can be. And he points out he wants to face perfect because he's a great athlete and a great wrestler, and he likes the guy. So Mean Gene starts by throwing Brett under the bus. Oh, yeah. He's like, so, Brett, uh, earlier you said that you'd prefer to face Mr. Perfect. Is that because you think that he would be an easier road? And now Mr. Perfect is like, what the fuck did this guy say that for? And then, you know, Brett's caught off guard. So, and Brett's great here because he starts mumbling and he's like tripping over his own words and acting all nervous. And, oh, fuck, I, you know, I, 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 I did say that, but that's not what I meant. So then Gene's like, what do you mean that's not what you meant? That's what you said. You said that Mr. Hughes was strong and powerful. Are you saying that Mr. Perfect would be easier? And now Perfect's like, yeah, what's that all about? And so Brett and Mr. Perfect start getting in a fucking argument. And then Gene goes, guys, please. I'm like, you started this, you shithead. Oh, that's what you we, fucking you know, sowed no. these seeds. Then you make them mad at each other. And now you blame them. That's why Gene is awesome. Golly. We need more stuff like this, but unfortunately there's no Gene. There's no Genes, but yeah, I mean, yeah, he's great at his job, but in storyline, what a dick. Absolutely. He was a complete dick. That's his job. Is to no, his job to is to ask questions and be an unbiased announcer or whatever. He's stirring shit up. He's lying. So even when he goes, when he when he tries to move on, and for those of you who are not video subscribers, I'm doing quotes with my fingers. For the, when, when Gene tries to move on, he says, oh, it's true that you're both second generation, second generation wrestlers. Did your fathers ever fight? God, what a troll. And Brett says, yeah, my dad always won. And now perfect you weren't raised. My dad beat your dad, he says. And I owe you one for SummerSlam last year. <laughs> so he goes, your dad never beat my dad. Yes. I owe you one for SummerSlam. I'll do whatever I have to win tonight because I'm a winner. There's a pause. And Brett just says under his breath, you weren't at SummerSlam. <laughs> Perfect goes to fake a handshake, and Brett goes to accept. Perfect says, I got you. Get out there. I'll kick your ass. This was so awesome. Dude, it was awesome, but it God was damn, what a great. dick that Gene was. If uh, I was Gene, disgusted. You know, when Gene was a little kid, he'd put uh, insects in a jar and shake them up so they could fight. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, I see your point. Bret Hart versus Mr. Perfect. I got to say one thing before you recap it. So uh, their match at SummerSlam was actually two years earlier. It was SummerSlam uh, 1991. Right. And uh, that goddamn fucking match when I was a kid, I'll never forget it. And I remember on whatever the show was, the Monday before the pay-per-view, Mr. Perfect came out and his back was all fucked up. But uh, and he, he like I think he just beat a jobber immediately because, you know, his back was bothering him. And uh, and he just cut a he was there with coach, and he cut a promo and he just goes, "This will be the greatest match in WWF history," and I was so fucking excited, and I waited all goddamn week, and then they had that match at SummerSlam, and I just remember I must have watched that match a thousand fucking times. I absolutely loved that match. And I can't remember, like, all off the top of my head, like, at this moment. But I'm positive if we started playing it right now, I'd know every move before it happened. I watched the match so many times. So then they had uh, this match in the King of the Ring. And uh, for 29 years now, I guess it would be, I've thought, you know what? Uh, This match was not nearly as good as their 1991 SummerSlam match. That's my memory of this match. And so I start watching it, and it's fucking awesome. And I'm just, I, I was watching this match thinking, why in the fuck do I not remember this match like I remember the 1991 summer? Because I know I must have watched this show a thousand times. I remember the uh, Yokozuna thing vividly. And, uh, and so about two thirds of the way into the match, I'm thinking, they must have some bullshit finish. There must have been something that happened that fucking soured me on this match, which is why I don't remember it as being like... And by the time this thing was over, I'm flabbergasted. This match was fucking awesome. Absolutely fucking awesome. And now, 
I got to go back and watch that SummerSlam 1991 match because if it's so much better than this one, as I seem to remember, that has to be one of the best matches I ever saw in my life because this was unbelievable, this match with Mr. Perfect and Bret Hart. God. So they had here in 1993, they basically went out and had a dynamite match. Maybe a little slower pace than most of them, but not much. No. No. <laughs> Dude, they were doing headlock takeovers. Uh-huh. Fucking FTR probably watched this match, and they would have been thrilled to go half that fast on their fucking headlock takeovers. Oh, yeah, there was more. Sp- it was There incredible. was more music between the notes. There for a little, yes, little there was a lot of music between the notes. There was some pacing going on, but the, the actual execution of moves, yes. And also the story, because they're both baby faces, and they set it up with the interview with Gene, but in the match, Mr. Perfect was going to play heel. And so they they worked it in such a way where he subtly started doing heel stuff. There was a hair pull here, a hair pull there. And, uh, and you know, by the end, he was working total heel. And then when the match is over, he's, he swung back again. But they had to tell that story in the middle of the match as well. Why Mr. Perfect played the heel role in this match. So the key spot, I think, is when Brick is thrown outside. And as you know, the Perfect is a baby face. So he used to hold the ropes open for him. And Brett starts to climb back in. And Brett, or excuse me, Perfect doesn't go so far as like kick the ropes into his dick or anything. But he doesn't let Brett get all the way in before he kicks him in the gut and takes over. And he's doing, I wouldn't say he's cheating. I don't call him choking or eye gouging or biting. But he's using closed fist punches. He's he's uh, uh, stomping him in the corner a lot. It's an ugly fight for sure. And it's, it's not just a technical battle. But it's super intense, back and forth the whole way. Brett takes a thousand bumps into the corners and he won't stay down. It's funny because they, 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 they go like, uh, I think it's a 30 minute time. It probably went 15 minutes the whole match. But they go like 10 minutes super fast. And like 10 minutes in, Brett hits a superplex and they begin to trade long submission spots. Brett gets a figure four for a minute. Perfect gets a sleeper for a minute. And they start trading elbows. And Brett hits a European uppercut with Macho Man called a lifter. Look at that lifter he hit. He was super excited about that. And uh, they go to do a suplex. They're near the ropes. And remember on Rampage when Swerve suplex Darby? And we're like, watch this move. And we we thought they would do something safer than what they actually did. And this was not as dangerous as that. But they did a suplex from the ring over the ropes to the floor. They both fell out. It was scary as hell. They slowly make their way back into the ring where Mr. Perfect is selling his leg, but he's playing possum. It is a trap. And so he tries a small package, Brett, but you can't outsmart the master. You can't out-counter-wrestle the best counter-wrestler in the world. Brett reverses the small package. He was still two steps ahead of Mr. Perfect, and Brett wins again. Dude, I there was a spot in this match where Mr. Perfect stomps on Bret Hart's fingers. And, uh, you know, Bobby Heenan used to manage Mr. Perfect, and then they split up and everything like that. And so, you know, Bobby is, he's, even though Mr. Perfect is playing heel, Bobby's role is to still dislike Mr. Perfect. But because of the story they're telling, there's certain things that Mr. Perfect does that Bobby approves of, because he's a horrible person. So uh, so he stomps on Brett's fingers, which, by the way, plays into the main event, because Brett comes out with his fingers taped for the main event. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Bobby Heenan goes, see, that's one of those things that I taught Mr. Perfect. I taught him, I taught him this psychology. And there's deathly silence for a moment. <laughs> and then Jim Ross, and then Mr. I think it was Randy Savage first goes, I'm not even going to dignify that with a response. And they all move on. And it's funny because it was great psychology, but the term psychology is only used if it's fake. Because stomping on a man's fingers... It's not psychology. No. It's an offensive maneuver to fuck his fingers up. If your psychologist stomps in your fingers, you should change doctors immediately. Yes. But I, I thought that was awesome. And Bret Hart, if you if you watch all of his matches and the story of this tournament, everything from his first match with Razor, the inner the inset interview he does, the interview leading to the argument with Mr. Perfect, the match with Mr. Perfect, which is a babyface match, but Mr. Perfect ends up working heel and stomps on his fingers. Leading to Brett doing an 18 minute second match, uh, 12 minute or whatever the first match was. So he's going into the main event having already wrestled for 30 minutes. Meanwhile, the big giant, Bam Bam Bigelow, had a six minute match and then a bye to the finals. And then 
as much as I, oh, we can talk about the main event in a minute, but the whole story of Brett's whole tournament, Brett was unbelievable on this show. This was like a one night performance of a lifetime for Bret Hart. Mm-hmm. But when this match was over, between the interview that Perfect did, the job Perfect did, essentially turning heel in the match, and then turning back babyface after the match, his work, his facial expressions, his reaction to his loss, this was the fucking Mr. Perfect show, this match right here. He was the star of this match. And that's not taking anything away from Brett because he was fucking awesome as well. But this was very much one of the best performances I ever saw out of Mr. Perfect was was this segment here, this match in the tournament. He was awesome. That's very high praise. This match was awesome. Uh, completely different than the first match that he had with Razor. Uh, that that was a more of a technical match with Razor, even though Res- Razor was the brawler. He gets in there with Perfect, who's more his size and speed, and they just have a fight. And it was a great fight with some wrestling moves sprinkled in here and there. The uh, the suplex out of the ring, uh, Perfect smashed his back on the ring apron. That did not look fun. Um, but this, this was a great match and uh, easily the best thing I've seen all week. So you did not watch... I didn't get a chance. Tanahashi no. and Ishii. I did okay. not get a chance. Because that awful. was better than this match. <laughs> it was awful. In it a totally made, different way. Yes. It was one of my favorite matches I've ever seen in my fucking life, the more I think about it. It was pretty spectacular. I want to summarize it here, Craig. Imagine Tanahashi trying to out Ishii. Ishii. And the other way around. And the other way around. Yes. yes. Hmm. And they both succeeded to a degree. Yes. God it. damn, that match was awesome. It was it was pretty dang great. Rob Bartlett is the man. He tried the best he can. Vince on the new room. What Rob Bartlett's gonna do to you? Vinny V, Happy Corbin, and Bartlett in a three-way. Oh. Here comes the commentator, Rob Bartlett. He's a great imitator of Vince McMahon. Rob! You're the love of my life. Come back to Monday Night Raw and be my wife. <laughs> what? Oh, wow. Is this Rob Bartlett? Guilty as ch- Hey! Oh, look who's here on the show, everybody. There's a star here. Rob, hey, Rob Bartlett is joining us here today. How you doing, Rob? I don't know what to say about this. To actually be proposed to in song was... A beautiful thing. <laughs> I couldn't really do much of an impression of him other than the the tone of the voice, you know. <laughs> he still got it. <laughs> he still got it. I think I had the wrong guy. Well, what, what did you learn about the the Rob Bartlett that you you uh, you checked out? He was an explorer way back when. That's not him. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. He was born August 15th, 1875, and so, died you, April 28th, 1946. He died in, okay, but you thought he might be on the show this week. Well, I couldn't figure out why you guys picked him. You can go to the Brian and Vinnie Matt Cleary Memorial Hall of Awesome. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Hey. Aye, 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 aye. Well, there he goes. Very aye. prestigious. You get nothing. You've warmed the cockles of my heart. I have warm cockles now. And um, lucky fella. I'm uh, I'm I'm moist. I'll just say that oh, yeah. I'm, I'm moist. If you enjoy these videos, for just seven dollars and ninety nine cents per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.